Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal, and this is my uh, little tech corner here of uh, YouTube. So recently, because it's January and I've been archiving, I've done a few videos about optical media archiving, and I'm going to keep those coming to the extent that I have anything new or useful to say on the subject. Um, but today I wanted to do one about um, CDs and DVDs in the era of the Blu-ray. So uh, optical media evolved a little bit uh, from about 700 megs um, with the CD through to BDXL. And thank you to the YouTube commenter who corrected me um, in saying that quad layer BDXL, which is 100 gig Blu-ray, is actually triple layer. And it's the 128 gig uh, Blu-ray that is a Blu-ray quad layer and as far as I know only Sony have made those discs ever so that's actually the biggest optical disc that's ever been in widespread commercial production we've been hearing these rumors about these one terabyte optical discs for many years and uh, to date nothing has actually come of that uh, on the consumer market at least so um, but the point remains you know by modern standards the best if the best we have is 100 gigs on a, a BDXL M disc, why would you bother with these little puny CDs? Uh, what's the difference there? 100, 700 megabytes and 1000. So it's more than 1000 times the capacity. So yes, optical media isn't where we might like it to be, but it still has undergone a quite significant uh, evolution in um, capacity as the products of uh, emerge. Oh, I just checked my Proton Mail address that's listed on my main YouTube channel. And every time I check, uh, even though I say, oh, please only send me if you have like PGP, I have emails from people, some of whom have watched these YouTube videos. So uh, I rarely check that and I will respond like two months later. But I do like to hear from other folks who are doing uh, archival stuff and optical media stuff. I mightn't have time to answer uh, specific questions and there's a very good chance you know more than me um, about the subject. But if you do want to get in touch, there is an email address that will reach me and that I do check uh, regularly. So why not... Why not to use CDs and DVDs? So this kind of speaks for itself, but to point out the obvious, they're much smaller in capacity. On a uh, Blu-ray regular, you can fit 25 gigabytes versus, it's. I think it's 8.7 on the dual layer DVDs and 4.7 on the regular ones. So a lot smaller. And of course, CDs, you can't even fit a gigabyte onto them. So they're a smaller capacity. And they did the cost working before, uh, in a separate video, I thought, well, maybe because they're smaller, um, they might be cheaper and you could technically save money if you were really motivated to. And actually, that's not the case. They're actually, um, per gigabyte, they're a lot more, quite a bit more expensive. I don't think the cost of any of these is mind blowing. But if you take a verbatim archival grade CD at $2 a CD, that is going to be $4 if you're doing an offsite. So that's going to be, let's see. Yeah, that's like, you know, five bucks a gigabyte versus you can get 25 gigabyte M disks for $2 each. So just on the back of an envelope, you can see uh, they're not cost efficient. Uh, next thing you have is the inferior longevity, uh, which we will come on to, although this is a hotly debated topic in the world of optical media. Um, reasons supporting them. So what what are reasons you might actually want to use them? Well, one of them that I can think of is off the top of my head is that firstly, the drives are cheap, uh, very cheap. You can get them for like 20 bucks if, if you want to go for like a random brand um, and possibly less these days. So if you just want to like try writing an optical media format in the year 2024 and you don't want to invest too much in case you don't like it um why not buy a cheap cd dvd drive and some cheap cds and uh you can uh if nothing else uh, reminisce about the those nice whirring noises that haven't been totally confined to history yet um so but the the serious reason i guess is yeah there is if you do want to practice or just play around with it a little bit that's why I uh, bought some cheap CDs last week. I was just trying to play around with writing stuff over the command line and other little projects that I didn't want to waste a bunch of expensive Blu-rays on. It's not really a great reason for keeping them in production, but while they're on the market, uh, it they can be useful for that. Um, cheaper drives, as I mentioned, and 
uh, less error prone. So this is one that people will debate. I recently had my Blu-ray uh, driver stop working, so I'm now a bit suspicious of uh, Blu-ray. It is a more advanced technology, right? The whole reason it supports more data is that the pits are a lot smaller and the laser has to be more accurate. So um, it is a more advanced tech. And I think I think it's reasonable to say that most people who have been doing optical for a while would say that generally your CD and DVD DVD burners are uh, just a bit more reliable, even though they store a lot less data. So here is a really interesting blog. I think I've um, shown this before. It's from the Canadian Conservation Institute. They have this whole big um, article about CDs and DVDs and their best practices for storing them. And they even how you can tell which dye is being used. It's quite an interesting piece. Um, and they have these little schematics of how these things work. So on the left, we have a CD and on the right, we have a DVD. And as we can see on the CD on the left, the data is being stored. And remember, we're talking um, about pitting, laser pitting into uh, some kind of a die, a recording layer. We can see that's really near the top of the disc. So uh, if you are holding a CD and the, it's a labeled CD, like a verbatim CD, the top side there, the data is very close to the top on a CD. Now we're obviously talking about very, very small, uh, very small actual physical units here, right? These things are all pretty small, but technically that is where the data is. When you look at a, a, a DVD on the right, you might notice that the data, the recording layer and the die recording layer or the metal recording layer and the protective layer, it's in the middle. So it's kind of sandwiched a bit was this plastic up the top. So a lot of people think, and I emphasize the word think because people seem to have a lot of opinions about this. People think that this means that CDs are riskier um, because the data is right there. And if you scratch, really, I guess on the top layer, you'd be worried yeah, about scratches or, or whatever. It's very close to the top. Um, whereas DVDs, people think that buffer gives them a bit of protection. And there is a lot of strong opinions either way on Reddit, um, which is why moving away from Reddit, I think these uh, articles by the by government institutions are very helpful because they take us away from uh, just kind of people with opinions. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, and I really like the data hoarder subreddit. Uh, if people are interested in that stuff here, but um, you know, so people are the opinions on this thread are all over the place. Some people say, "Oh, all my CDs are all my old CDs are working just fine; it's the best." Other people, someone else says, "CDs are garbage. All my old CDs don't read. Go for DVDs." So a lot of different uh, data points on on Reddit. So coming again back to the Canadian Conservation Institute, which is called the CCI. So this this is, um, they published this table with the expected lifespan, sorry, yeah, the expected lifespan of different discs based on the type. So interestingly, they actually have, they so they didn't have the, they don't have the M disc, but this was published in 2010 originally. This is all, again, everything with optical media tends to be quite old and not very up to date. Um, so they did get Blu-rays in there, but they didn't... Um, specify m discs as a difference i don't know if there's anything to read into that, that they don't really trust the m disc or they don't they don't think it's officially different from regular blu-rays i don't know i've no idea but suffice to say the m disc isn't listed as a separate category here uh, but what they do have is that the cd with the gold metal layer which is the um which is verbatim cdr archival grade product they actually say that's the best of everything uh, they say that should last more than 100 years. I don't know what they're basing that on. If you want to read this research, you can uh, dig into that original paper. There is a citation. And um, then they say that other stuff, including Blu-rays, is going to be less resilient. So again, it's kind of a myriad of opinions here. On the one hand, you have people saying, well, CDs are uh, the least, the most vulnerable, and there's this composition data to kind of support that. And then you have these people saying, actually, CDRs are the very best you can do. So I would uh, tend to, you know, my own opinions. Oh, and I thought I thought it'd be funny. I've been looking at these recently. I've been trying to decide how far down this rabbit hole I want to fall. And uh, the ultimate collapse into this rabbit hole would be something like buying a mini, mini DVD burner. I see they still exist. Um, but just to say that not everything still has actually really got a purpose in the form of archival like there are things that i just can't see any uses for and these three technologies 
uh, fall into that um, category. The laser discs are look absolutely hilarious to me. Um, I actually only came across them recently, but it looks to me like it's very deprecated. Uh, it was proprietary. There is analog and di- digital data can be mixed on the one. I, I just couldn't find a, a writer for love or money. Obviously, where, where there is a will, there is a way. And if you want to go on a crazy DIY project, I'm sure you could. That would be quite interesting. But as it's just not really on the market. Mini DVDs, actually, there is still a mini DVD burner out there. Uh, I think there's only one. And they're basically DVDs with this little form factor. That, that would be kind of eccentric if you wanted to build, you know, back up onto mini DVD. So long as you could find the media, um, you could do that. But I suspect you'll the media won't be around for too much longer. Um and uh, they have in this photo a mini DVD just going on to a regular drive. Um, I was under the impression you needed a separate one, but I've never really used them. The only time I've seen them is when I get some, sometimes you get instruction manuals written onto a mini DVD, which I always thought was very strange uh, when you buy stuff from like China and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you can actually write these things on a regular one, but I don't, I don't think so because... I found a specific mini DVD burner. And finally, you have the mini disc. People old enough um, of my generation might might remember these uh, way back in the day. And they actually only held 140 megs, which makes sense because they're like smaller than CDs physically. Um, I don't think, I don't know if these were ever actually used for data. But I, again, these are just examples of, of stuff that I thought was kind of interesting and, and random uh if you've if you anyone watching this video has heard of someone archiving onto any of these old and wonderful forms of optical media please let me know i'd be very uh very curious to uh, to see if anyone's actually attempted that just for just as a wacky project but a more practical advantage for archiving onto cd or dvd that would strike me is that it's sometimes useful to archive data into smaller chunks, by which I mean you have a specific project and instead of mixing up all your data to fill up a a BD, a a Blu-ray, it might actually sometimes be useful to say, okay, I'm going to just put this photo album on the CD, even though I could put a lot of them onto Blu-ray. Um, you're going to wind up with more discs that way, of course, but some people kind of are not bothered by that or they even like collecting optical media, physical media. Um, the other thing to mention is that CDs and DVDs both have, I feel like, pretty strong cult followings. Um, I discovered the CD collector subreddit and there are some insane collections in there. And then you've got a DVD collector subreddit and someone is like, why do you not use CDs and why do the CD people not use DVDs? And I think each group just likes their own product and the packaging, just stuff like that, nostalgia, I guess. But I think that for the vast majority of data archival needs, uh, Blu-ray is going to be a better bet. You'll get more data and MDisc, which I still recommend as the, you know, as the best one for archival um, is the DVDs. I don't think are going to be on the market for that much longer because uh, verbatim never made them. Uh, uh, right tech have the technology but i don't think they're i'm not sure they're still making them but the uh, blu-ray m discs are at least still in production and yes i know some people are have cast doubts over whether they're actually m discs but i'm not in that uh, i'm on the other side of the argument i i've no re- I, I don't disbelieve that they're still making actual uh and just using the the trade uh the, the 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 trade proprietary technology um if you have different fields i'm just one opinion um here on the internet if you have different opinions about why cds and dvds still have a place in the uh, blu-ray world of archival media let me know i'd be interested to hear uh, any reasons i might have missed Uh, or if you know of any folks who've ever attempted to uh, in in this year of 2024 or recently or still have ever used any of these random uh, archival media for backup that would be quite interesting too to me thanks for watching this uh this episode until the next one have a great day